Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I wanted to go over another 15 facts that you may not know about old school RuneScape or just generally lesser known aspects of RuneScape. A lot of people enjoyed the last video so I thought I'd make another one. There are so many different tidbits of information out there that I think are really interesting. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy and let's get started. First up here, did you know that the god books actually have a special attack? Now on most of the books, you can use 25% of your special attack energy and you will actually display a text line. Now these are different for each book, but generally there are wedding ceremony lines, last rites, uh, blessings, and preaching. So if you ever want to get married in old school RuneScape, you'll need to go ahead and grab a god book. This special attack is unique in the way that it actually costs special attack energy, but it doesn't do anything, no combat related bonuses, defensive or anything other than that. It's pretty mundane but I actually never knew about this even though I use the Book of Darkness all the time. Next up here, have you ever been in a situation where your text chat is filled up with random characters you've accidentally been inputting for the last two hours? Uh, well I end up with that all the time and what I normally end up doing is just hitting enter and shouting that out because it's quicker than uh, deleting the whole thing, or so I thought. Did you know that if you hold down the control button and hit backspace, it auto deletes everything in your chat box without having to individually delete every character? This is extremely useful for people like me who end up with a bunch of crap in their chat box, uh, but don't want to display that to the world by shouting it at people. I'm really surprised I never knew about this. Pretty useful, a bit of a time save, and generally just a nice quality of life change. I don't know when it was put in, or maybe it was there forever, but there you go. Coming in at number 3, did you know that the Dragon Axe's special attack used to be combat related? Currently when you use the Dragon Axe special attack, it will boost your woodcutting level by 3 levels. However, the special attack used to be known as Clobber and it lowered the opponent's defense and magic by 10%. I think they deemed that it was kind of weird to have that on a skilling item because most people were not using the Dragon Axe as a combat related weapon. So they ended up changing it on March 27th, 2014 to the current special attack which I think is a lot more logical. Did you know that the witch Aggie claims to have created the tomato that is in her house accidentally whilst trying to summon a lesser demon? This is apparently the explanation to why the tomato keeps reappearing in her house. We're not sure if she's referring to all tomatoes or just the tomato in her house. That being said, her claim cannot really be taken seriously as she also says that the tomatoes do sometimes bite. Uh, which there is no evidence of. Is she crazy or did she actually just fail to summon a lesser demon and a tomato appeared instead? When the old school runescape first came out, the toy horsey was actually a little bit different. Now what the toy horse does is you kind of play with it and you say a text line. Before they changed it, uh, you would actually get a phrase randomly. You'd get, come on Dobbin, we can run the race. Hi ho silver and away, or nay giddy up horsey. Now this was actually changed as part of an anti-gambling update, as you used to get these taglines randomly and they could actually be used in games of chance. Some of the more popular ones were the mithril seed which turned into different colored flowers, however now that one is quite different, but the exact same process got applied to the horsey as well so now these taglines are not random and the item is totally different. When the Winter Tot update was released there was actually an easter egg put into the game and it's from Rick and Morty. If you talk to one of the NPCs in the Burnt Town by Winter Todd, uh, one of the NPCs will say wubba dubba lub dub or wubba lubba dub dub, whatever, I don't know. It's from Rick and Morty and it's probably one of the more modern references put into the game. Most of them are to like Monty Python or old British sitcoms. This one was actually put in the game for a pretty recent TV show, Rick and Morty. Next up here, uh, well first up, did you know that there are enchant jewelry tablets? Well, I didn't know that, but that's not really what the tip is. What's really interesting about these enchant jewelry tablets is that they actually have no cooldown to use. Unlike regular enchanting where you have to wait a couple game ticks before you can enchant your next piece of jewelry, the jewelry tablets have no cooldown. Is this that useful? Not particularly, as the tablets are a lot more expensive than just casting the spell normally. However, in certain circumstances where you actually need to enchant the item yourself, for example the dig site pendant, it can be useful for higher level players or people who are really in a rush, as you could enchant an entire inventory of dig site pendants in a matter of seconds. You still need to use the tablet on the jewelry directly, but there is no cooldown so you can do it as quickly as you can click between your inventory. Now it is like 300 GP more than just actually casting the spell yourself, but still interesting to know. Now next up here is an interesting one about the Dragon Dagger. Did you know that if the Dragon Dagger special attack deals more damage 
than is required to kill the opponent, you are still going to be provided the experience even though you didn't actually do damage to the opponent. This is pretty unique as far as weapons go because for the most part you are not going to be getting excess experience for doing extra damage. I think this might have to do with just how the Dragon Dagger Spectral Attack works. In hitting more than once in a single game tick, the way it calculates must be different when you compare it to other special attacks or other damaging abilities. When the Deranged Archaeologist was released, there was actually a bit of controversy about the drop table. Uh, the controversial item on it was an Amulet of Glory. The Deranged Archaeologist actually dropped an uncharged Amulet of Glory. The reason this was controversial is that Iron Man had generally had a pretty iconic grind of getting the Amulet of Glory, either from um, catching implings in Puro Puro, or potentially getting 80 crafting to make one yourself. With the Deranged Archaeologist dropping it, it would have been way easier for those players to get one and kind of devalue all the accomplishments of people who had already gotten one the harder way, which I think in generally we shouldn't base things around that, but at the same time, this was just a kind of a random drop table. It had no impact removing it. It was only worth a 20k or something. So after a lot of people complained, they ended up actually removing it from the drop table. So what they put on there instead is a crystal key, so you can still go ahead and get your Dragonstone, but you'd have to get the Amulet of Glory the normal way. Did you know that one of the creators, Paul Gower, stated in a Q&A that the Blast Furnace was initially intended to be the Smithing Guild? And you can kind of see why. The Blast Furnace is one of the most popular places to go for smithing experience. Honestly, the whole Keldegrim area kind of seems like an entire smithing guild in itself. Now, I might be kind of biased here, but I would really like to see a guild for every single skill and have that guild actually be a viable method of training because the guilds actually have a requirement to get into and they're for the most part pretty useless. Did you know that it is more likely for you to get a piece of third age from a master clue as opposed to an elite clue. Now this isn't exactly directly comparable as the pieces of third age are different between the different clue scrolls and master clues are a lot harder to obtain so you're not going to be completing as many masters as you are elites, although who does elites anyway? Just recently we have gotten some pretty accurate drop rates for the clue scroll rewards. The chance of getting a third age piece from a master clue scroll is 1 out of 313,000 and the chance of getting a third age piece from an elite clue scroll is 1 out of 488,000, making it quite a bit more rare. Did you guys know about the Elidnus Statuette? The Elidnus Statuette is a shrine in Narda and is available after the completion of Spirit of the Elid quest. Now, I've never done this quest apparently, so I didn't know about this, but after you complete the quest, you can pray at the statue and it will fully restore the player's prayer level, completely heal them, restore run energy, and restore special attack. It cures poison and gives a temporary hit point boost. Now it's in Narda, so it's really far out of the way, but if you completed the Elite Desert Diary, you can actually teleport right to the statue, which makes it a pretty good alternative to a high level POH. Although it's not really that good as you actually need like 78 construction to complete the Desert Diary, but still I thought it was interesting and might provide a niche use for somebody. Next up here, did you know that while you're in the wilderness, you cannot actually get certain random events. Uh, the main ones are ones that actually teleport you away from the location, as I assume they thought that would be a little bit overpowered. For example, if you're getting attacked by a PKer and the evil Bob random event pops up, uh, you could just piece the hell out of there and the PKer would probably be kind of mad. And there's a little bit of theory crafting then that uh, actually being in the wilderness will increase the rate of getting a genie random, although it's not really proven yet, as the genie random does not teleport you away and most of the random events do. The only problem with that is it would also remove the dunce random event, which is also a fairly sought after one. Next up here, did you know that the Ring of Gods appears to actually be a recolored divine sigil? upside down. If you have a look at the Divine Sigil from RS3, it is actually the exact same shape as the ornamentation on the Ring of Gods. Would I be that surprised? Not really. Jagex does like to pull a lot of things from RS3. Does this mean that microtransactions are right around the corner? I think so. And the last up here, did you know that Zanaris is actually Gilinor's moon? Now this was stated in RS3 as well as I think maybe in RS2. But not until recently do we actually get any indication of that being true in old school RuneScape. The new Slayer Master, Konar, actually has a text line saying that Zanaris is the moon of this world. It's not that unbelievable as there are fairies. It's a completely different world, clearly. But yeah, apparently it is actually the moon. Anyway guys, that is it for the video. I hope you learned something or found the video interesting. If you have any other interesting facts that I may have missed, definitely leave a comment down below. 
And if you did enjoy the video, I would appreciate it if you left a like. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.